Mia Zapata was an American singer and songwriter who was murdered by an unknown assailant on the night of July 7, 1993 in Seattle, Washington. Mia's death was a massive shock to the burgeoning grunge music scene of the early 1990s. She was also one of the few women in the music genre that was typically dominated by men. Mia's death would be a cold case for nearly a decade until 2002, when the case would finally be solved. This is the story of the mysterious murder of Mia Zapata. Mia Catherine Zapata was born on August 25th in 1965 in Louisville, Kentucky and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mia's parents noted her musical inclinations from an early age. She learned to play the guitar at age 9, and she was inspired by artists such as Sam Cooke, Billie Holiday, Ray Charles, and Bessie Smith. She attended the well-known Presentation Academy, a high school for girls in the Louisville area, and she was also began to develop an affinity for punk music. In 1984, she was enrolled in Antioch College in Yellow Springs, Ohio, with a degree in liberal arts. Her musical interests also included R&B, jazz, and the blues. Despite coming from a rather rich family, Zapata was known to be very frugal with money and rejected material possessions. Mia's father would say, Mia lived in two different worlds. She lived on two different sides of the street. The straight side of one, parochial schools, an affluent family, and tennis clubs. But when she crossed the other side of the street, material things didn't mean anything to her. Mia was known to be well connected in her community and was well liked. Sometime while in Ohio, Mia and three other friends formed a punk band called The Gets. They took their name from a Monty Python skit. The members of the band included Joe Spleen, born Andy Kessler, Matt Dresner, and Steve Morarty, and Mia Zapata. Zapata was the lead singer. In 1989, the band then moved to Seattle, Washington, and moved into an abandoned building in which they called the Rat House. They settled in the Capitol Hill district of the city. Capitol Hill is known for its vibrant nightlife, LGBTQ scene, and counterculture. In 1992, the band released their debut album called Frenching the Bully, which included the songs Here's to Your Fuck, Cat My Skin, and it makes me bleed, and the Kings and Queens. An Iowa-based alternative newspaper, the River City's Reader, noted Zapata's passion and conviction to the lyrics. The band soon began to make a name for themselves in the developing Seattle grunge scene, and despite the band being mostly male, they found a home in Seattle's feminist community. There was an awkwardness about her because she would pull her knees together, and you know, she looked like a chicken. I mean, she did. <laughs> Let's put it, you know, it's the truth. <laughs> and it was awesome because you're like, who is this lady who sings like a heavy angel? You know what I mean? It was like, where is Ma Rainey and Bessie Smith? Let's just like power punch them and power pack them, you know, inside this chicken woman. Who's got a lot of heart, you know, what's going on here? Social love, no, that film is red enough. And what ails me is the fact that you're smiling, walking on by it, walking on by. And yeah, when it hits me, see you still gets kind of heavy. Mia worked in a bar on the side, and the band performed with their sister band, Seven Year Bitch, who were a feminist rock band that formed around the same time. They were part of the Riot Girl subculture of punk music that discussed topics of feminism, punk music, and politics. The Gets were at the height of their stardom, playing an American and European tour, and were in the middle of their second album, Enter the Conquering Chicken. On July 7th, 1993, Mia had performed at the Comet Tavern in the Capitol Hill district of Seattle, she then left alone and walked to a friend's house. At this time, she had lived near the Comet Tavern in the basement of an apartment. 
She visited her friend on the second floor, and that was the last time Mia Zapata was seen alive. It was around 2 in the morning. Around 3.30 that morning, a body of a woman was found around 24th Street and South Washington Avenue in a residential area of Seattle called Central District. It was not immediately determined to be Zapata, as she did not carry an identification on her, and it was believed that she was identified by a fan. She had been beaten and raped by an unknown attacker. Her autopsy described a struggle in which Mia struggled with her attacker before dying of blunt force trauma from her injuries. The death of Mia Zapata sent shockwaves through Seattle's music scene. Many grunge bands, such as Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, and Nirvana raised over $70,000 for a private investigator to investigate the murder, but the money soon ran out. The money ran out with no leads, and in 1998, five years after Mia's murder, Seattle police detectives lamented, We're no closer to solving the case than when we were right after the murder. The case soon turned cold and will remain unsolved for another five years. Jesus Mesquina was a fisherman from Florida. He had been a part of the 1980 Mario boat lift, a mass immigration of Cubans from Cuba to the United States to escape the oppressive Fidel Castro regime. Mesquina had been known to be a violent person and had a violent past with women, which included acts of assault and battery. He had also been cited for indecent exposure. He was known to be a drifter, and he wandered the country. Eventually, he would come to Seattle. Due to not having enough information to make a DNA match, the authorities froze the DNA evidence from Mia's body in the hope that the case would be solved in the future. In the early 2000s, Mesquina was committed of a recent crime in Florida. His DNA fingerprint was added to a database called Coitus, or Combined DNA Index System. Mesquina's DNA was then connected to a DNA sample that was recovered from Mia's body and was soon apprehended for the murder of Mia Zapata. He was 47 years old. It is believed that in the early morning hours of July 7th, 1993, Mia had left the Common Tavern in Seattle's Capitol Hill District. She had on shorts and thick black combat boots and was walking to a friend's house. Mosquito was hiding in the shadows and slowly began to follow her. It could be possible that Mia even asked Mosquito for a ride. Mosquito then attacked and raped Zapata. He then put the body in his car and assaulted it further before dumping it in the central district neighborhood of the city. Mesquina was convicted of murder and in 2004, he was sentenced to 37 years in prison. Mesquina never testified in his defense and he has maintained his innocence. Juror number four, is this your individual verdict? Yes. And is it the verdict of the jury? Yes. Juror number five, is this your individual verdict? Yes. And is it the verdict of the jury? Yes. Juror number six, is this your individual verdict? Yes. And is it the verdict of the jury? Yes. Juror number seven, is this your individual verdict? Yes. And is it the verdict of the jury? Yes. Juror number eight. The death of Mia Zapata shook the Seattle music scene. The fact that an up-and-coming singer was murdered and the case being unsolved for a decade made people feel uneasy. In response to her murder, several grunge bands created a self-defense course called Home Alive, which helps women learn how to defend themselves. Singer Joan Jett, who was part of the 1970s all-female rock group The Runaways, recorded an album called Evil Stig, which is Git spelled backwards. Remaining Gits and myself we called Evil Stig, which means Gits live backwards. to uh, Viva Zapata. Thank you for supporting. Awaken in a state.
the Gets It Sister Band, Seven Year Bitch, recorded an album called Viva Zapata, and in one of the songs, some of the lyrics mention Zapata's murder directly, call for vigilante justice against her attacker. Both albums were dedicated to Zapata. Mia's death haunted the city of Seattle. The city lost a sense of innocence and invincibility. One person noted, they were all very tough women, tough, hard-hitting, outspoken, and very opinionated. I think Mia's death shattered that myth that this happens to all types of women. Some have even looked at the death of Mia Zapata as a feminist icon, or a martyr. This is most likely due to her being a part of the up-and-coming Riot Girl scene and being loved solely for her musical talent. Gets drummer Steve Moarty noted, Mia wanted to relate to people on a personal level in her lyrics than a political one. Mia was returned to her hometown of Louisville, Kentucky and buried at Cave Hill Cemetery. Mia Zapata was 27 years old when she died.